Hey everyone, with Forza Horizon 4's Steam release, I figured now is a great time to make a video for players new to the franchise, explaining in short just how the game works and giving some tips and tricks to make your time in Horizon more enjoyable. Jumping into a new franchise that's already well established can be pretty daunting, and especially considering that Horizon 4 itself has been out a while now, you might be wondering if it's even worth it to jump in this late. Let me answer that right away, yes. Horizon 4 is not only a great game to play solo, the online community is still very healthy and the Steam release is going to bring a huge wealth of new players. If you're worried that you're getting into the game too late, don't. Horizon 4 is still one of the best racing games you can buy and this video should give you a solid jumpstart into your Horizon career. So let's get into it, starting with the prologue of the game. You'll have to complete one in-game year of driving before you're sent into the open world with live seasons. After that intro year, you'll be dropped in with other players on a live server with seasons that change every week for everyone. During that intro year though, you'll get to pick some starter cars. Don't worry about what to choose here. Every option is very easily obtainable, the only minor exception being the Ram 2500 Power Wagon which unlocks after leveling up in cross country races. All the others are sold from the Auto Show, which is where you can buy most cars in the game. And let's talk quick about obtaining cars, because there are quite a few different ways to get them. Many, but not all cars, are available in the Auto Show. You can also hunt for cars in the Player Run Auction House. Every car in the game can be listed here, often for cheaper than the Auto Show. But most rare cars will be extremely hard to get your hands on as they're bought out within seconds of listing. You'll also get a lot of wheel spins throughout your time playing, which can reward some pretty nice cars. Your best bet for getting rare cars though is by completing seasonal challenges, and we'll get back to that. You can also get quite a few cars by completing various other challenges like Horizon Life levels. Horizon 4 loves to throw cars at you, and you'll start filling up your 1000 car garage pretty quick. Ok, so let's talk money. Very early on, you might find yourself struggling for cash, but don't worry, you'll be loaded in no time. Forza Horizon is not a game you ever need to grind for cash in. Just play the game, and the money flows. The money you make from completing races depends primarily on two things. How long the race was, in distance not time, and how many assists you have on. So doing long races in faster cars without assists is the most money efficient. If you're looking for a quick buck though and have the Fortune Island expansion, you can complete treasure hunts there for a total of 10 million credits. If you want to earn some passive income even while you aren't online, go complete the Horizon business missions like Express Delivery or Isha's Taxis. The more you complete and the better you do, the more you'll earn while offline. Right now, there are 5 total businesses to complete. You can also download the Forza Hub, a sort of social Forza app that also gives you credits weekly in every Forza game that you play. Alright, so it's time to talk driving. Horizon's physics sit somewhere between arcade and simulation. Think of it as simulation with training wheels and some of the fun knobs turned up a bit. So there's no NOS button, you'll have to brake for corners. Drifting takes a bit of work, and cars have generally realistic handling. Forza's handling model is, in my opinion, one of the best out there. And it's tempting to want to upgrade your cars as much as possible when you start getting cash, but this is in a lot of cases a bad idea, especially early on in the game. Because without learning how to build, tune, and drive fast cars, you might struggle. There's nothing wrong with driving slower cars. Faster cars aren't inherently better. There's a class system. So every car gets an individual score, called its Performance Index, or PI for short. That score dictates which class the car sits in. Here are all the PI ranges for each class. What this means is that slow, old cars can still be competitive in their respective classes. Modifying cars is more about finding the right class for the car and maxing out its PI for that class, not just max upgrading every car you get. Take this Supra for example. It starts in C class. You can swap the engine and give it tons of upgrades and power, but that makes it pretty hard to handle, and since it now sits kind of in the middle of S1 class and not at the top, it won't necessarily be competitive. Instead, we can bring it right to the top of A class. This makes it a nice handling car with good power and grip that won't get smoked by other cars in its class. 
Alright, so what upgrades should you be picking? Well, that depends, and I do have a video all about it. But in general, to start, try to find a balance between power and handling. Picking upgrades that unlock tuning options are also helpful, otherwise tuning screens like these will remain locked. If you don't want to worry about what parts to pick, you can use the auto upgrade feature, which gives you pretty good single player builds, just don't expect these to be very competitive online as those builds require a lot of fine tuning. And while we're on the topic of tuning, you may notice that there is a pretty advanced tuning menu. If this isn't something you're familiar with, don't worry about it yet. In single player, you could make it through the whole game without even touching this stuff. You can also download other people's tunes from this menu here. Be careful using this though as you never really know if the tune you're getting will be good or even for the right type of event you want to compete in. As you get more familiar with the game, I strongly suggest learning to tune yourself and bit of a self plug, I've got some videos on that. Having at least a basic understanding of tuning in Forza Horizon will help a ton. Alright, so I want to talk about what you do in Forza Horizon, and what the average gameplay loop is for someone that's played this game for a while, more or less the end game. Before you reach that point, really all I can tell you is to complete whatever you want to complete. There is a ton of content in this game, and it's all rewarding, so you do you. Horizon takes on a pretty open and yet still nicely guided approach to progression. You'll want to unlock all the races to get each discipline's final big race, do all the showcases, complete the stories scattered around the map, and get some collectibles for levels and cheaper fast travel. Eventually you'll get your gold wristband, a sort of symbolic gesture that you've reached the endgame. At this point, you'll still have plenty of stuff to complete around the map, but let's talk about what seasoned FH4 vets do when they log in. A lot of folks chase leaderboards and try to set personal goals of maybe top 10%, top 1000, etc. These leaderboards may be in the open world, PR stunt challenges like drift zones or speed traps, or in a more structured sense. Rivals events. These events are where a lot of the best players flex their skill. Rivals are time trial events in specific cars or specific classes with an ongoing global leaderboard. There's also a limited time rivals event every month. This is where you often see the best players in the game. I highly recommend at least dabbling in rivals, it's a great way to learn about which cars are better than others and just how to drive well, as you're always chasing the ghost of someone faster than you. If live player interaction is more your thing though, there are also tons of online events to compete in. Online adventure is a good place to start. You can compete ranked or unranked, in teams or free for all, track racing, off-road or drifting competitions. There's something for everyone here. And if that isn't enough, there are also the cheekily named Playground Games. Goofy game modes like King of the Hill or Capture the Flag with cars. These can be a blast with friends. And if you're still itching for more things to do with a car, you can hop into the Eliminator, a battle royale game mode with cars. So, you'll find many longtime Horizon players hunting for online rank or climbing leaderboards, but there is one important thing to mention that every player should be doing, and that is the Festival Playlist. This is a collection of events that come out every month with exclusive rewards. It's broken up by season, so every week there are new challenges to complete. From taking a picture in a unique location with a specific car, to remixed versions of the showcase events, and even weekly online championships. This is where I would say the true endgame lies. You'll want to complete these every week because you will be rewarded with brand new to the game cars. Yes, Horizon still now releases new cars every month for free. You can also get some older rare cars you won't find anywhere else and backstage passes, allowing you to visit the Horizon Backstage, home of many of the game's rarest cars. Finally, if you're playing online, there are Forzathon events every hour on the hour, where players gather together to complete a random set of PR stunts as a group. If you complete them all in time, you get an exclusive currency that allows you to buy rare rewards that cycle out weekly. So to summarize, once you've gotten a good foothold in the world of Horizon 4, start completing as much of the festival playlist as you can, jump into some Forzathon live events when they pop up, and jump into Rivals Racing or Online Adventure. Or honestly, just build cars and have fun. Horizon accepts all types. So, we've covered cars, driving, money making, the beginning and end game, 
Let's rattle off some quick fire tips before we wrap up this video. There are barns scattered around the map which when found unlock some exclusive cars. You'll get the general area of these placed on the map, but still have to find the exact location. Use your drone to find these. Flying in the sky with a speedy drone is much more efficient than navigating the terrain in your car. Initially, fast travel is pretty limited, but you can always fast travel to the festival for free by going to the festival here in the pause menu. And there are billboards scattered across the map that when smashed make fast travel cheaper. Buying this house also lets you fast travel anywhere on the map, so make sure to buy that one ASAP. All the houses actually have unique perks, so make sure you check them all out. If you drive a certain car a lot, fully unlock its skill tree. This usually gives you big skill point bonuses, but can sometimes get you free credits or wheel spins as well. Racking up skill points and gaining influence is a big part of progression early on in the game, so getting high skill scores faster and easier is always a bonus. Don't be ashamed to keep some assists on, especially at first. I've played for hundreds of hours and still play with things like rewind and breaking line on. Although the credits bonus might seem nice at first, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Play how you want, that's what Horizon is all about. Try to focus on building a car for every situation. This one will take a while and you should absolutely drive as many cars as you can, but as you play more, Start honing in on a few favorites for each type of event. Rivals and online adventure can really help to figure out some strong car choices. And speaking of rivals, you can choose any opponent you want to race against, including the global leader or even yourself. Both of these can be really helpful in nailing that faster line through the track. Alright, I think that's about all there is to it. This is only a beginner's guide after all. I really hope this helped you out and eases your passage into the world of Horizon. I have a lot more resources on my own channel, and if you don't find it here, there is a massive community of helpful Forza folks out there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.